Put Revic through, Lieutenant. Aye, sir. Captain, is there something wrong? My ship still needs repairs. Yes, you might say something's wrong. What are you doing here? Why does your ship have an abundance of monitoring equipment, cargo capacity, and a cloaking device? And your courier ship has undersized engines. You're concerned that my ship is not up to specifications? Mr. Revick, do we have to spell it out? You weren't just recently passing through the system. You've been in orbit for decades. And perhaps we should call you a Revok, just like your Novaran supplicants do. I have no idea what you're talking about. My courier ship was caught in an ion storm when I passed through. Then what about the transporter technology and the radio transmitters that are located on the planet's surface? For electronic prayers and offerings? Okay. So, what if they were giving tribute? Then you admit it. You've been playing God. I admit that I've been helping them, curing diseases, helping with agriculture. What of it? I'm not bound by your prime directive. But what you're doing is wrong. You've stolen these people's way of life. What right do you have to- What gives me the right? Divine right, perhaps. Who's to say I wasn't destined or fated to be their god? You and I know that I'm just a scientific wizard up here orbiting over the Navarans' heads, but they see me as a supreme being. You're evading the issue, Revik. This has to end. If I leave, I'll no longer be able to help them. Diseases, tornadoes, hurricanes, drought will all come back. What will they do? They will do what all developing cultures must do. Learn to cope and learn to address the difficulties of their planet's environment and solve the problems all sentient beings must solve. They must develop science, reason, on their own. You're giving them a crutch. In the long run, it can only end up harming them more than helping. You're spoiling them. All of this is academic, gentlemen. I need those repairs. Denying them from me means you are actively interfering with the planet's current society. You'll just have to make do. Tell the Navarans that you trust them to go their own way, that you'll watch them, but not interfere. But Captain, I need that Iridium. If I don't repair the cloaking device, the Navarans will eventually detect me. Surely it's a violation of your prime directive to allow their society to be disrupted. It won't be disrupted for centuries. Then I'll cut off communication with them immediately, if you don't help me. I assure you, Captain, I can cause drought and crop failures as easily as I have caused helpful rains. But you wouldn't. Mr. Scott, our technical files are being accessed by someone outside the ship. Oh, that tears it. Scott to bridge. Scott to bridge. Bridge, Kirk here. Revik is accessing our technical files. He's getting the specifications of all our equipment. Confirmed, Captain. Revik is using one of his advanced sensor arrays to scan our computer's memory banks. In particular, he was able to access the specs for our replicators before Mr. Scott managed to break the connection. With that data, he will be able to... I'll be able to replicate as much iridium as I need. Thanks for the help, gentlemen. I believe this concludes our business. Listen, Revik. If you think we'll just stand by, why you... That's exactly what you'll do. Your own regulations prevent you from taking any action against me. But he can't be allowed to continue this charade. We have to stop him, Jim. I'm afraid there really isn't much we can do, Bones. We'll be leaving the area, Revik. I know when I've been beaten. Kirk out. Mr. Sulu, take us out of the system. Warp Factor 2. Aye, sir. Warp 2. I can't believe you're just going to let Revit get away with this. Am I? Mr. Erex, when I give the order, bring the ship about. Take the Enterprise directly at Revit's ship, then veer off at the last moment. Speed, sir. Warp 6. Mr. Sulu, full power to weapons. Set phasers for pinpoint firing pattern. One quarter power. Direct phasers to these coordinates. But hold your fire until I give the command. Aye, sir. What are you... Just watch, Doctor. Now, Mr. Eriks, bring her about. Yes, Captain.
Red alert. Sound battle stations. Aye, sir. Rabbit's hailing us, sir. No response, Lieutenant. We are now 10,000 kilometers from him. 9,000. 8,000. 7,000. Direct hits, Captain. Minimal damage. Now, Mr. Sulu, return fire. Direct phasers at the specified coordinates. Aye, sir. Put Revic through, Lieutenant, and silence the alarms. Aye, sir. What is the meaning of this? How dare you attack me? You violated your own most important directive. Ah, but in emergency situations, the self-defense of a starship takes precedence over the prime directive. And since you fired first, we had no choice but to defend ourselves. But you didn't fire at my engines or weapons. No. Sensor scans indicate that the damage to the courier vessel is minimal. However, the cloaking emitter was completely destroyed. You did that on purpose. We just fired in self-defense. It must have just been a lucky shot. Sorry about that. If you'd like, you can file a complaint with Starfleet Command regarding my actions. No, I know when I've been outwitted. Ravik out. So, this concludes our business? Captain's Log, Stardate 6924.1. We have left the Navarin system. Revic's ship remains in orbit, but I've alerted Starfleet Command about the situation, and they intend to deploy observation arrays to monitor the system to ensure Revic does not escalate his interference with the native population. Helmsman, steady she goes. Aye, sir. Scanning our engineering computer files was a pretty neat trick, but he didn't know who he was messing with. He will not be able to repair his cloaking device without outside assistance which he won't be able to do without alerting Starfleet. He'll be forced to slowly withdraw his influence over the years, until he's little more than a memory. And if he doesn't, the Navarans will figure out he's a fraud on their own before long. Ugh, oh, I knew you couldn't just stand by and let him get away with it. But the law was on his side, Jim. There's an old Earth saying, Bones. Fiat justitia, ruat calum. I think I know it. Latin. Cicero, wasn't it? Actually, Doctor, the quote is attributed to the Roman statesman Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesonius, circa 55 BC. Piso was also the father-in-law of Gaius Julius Caesar, then Emperor of Rome. It is also the motto of Starfleet's Judge Advocate General's office. Blasted walking encyclopedia. What does it mean, Jim? It means, do justice and let the heavens fall. Appropriate, Captain. Aye. Do the right thing, regardless of the consequences? I'll say, though it wasn't quite legal. You did justice, and in a way, heaven, a revoc, did fall. Hmm. What's wrong, Bones? I was just wondering, what would you have done if Reverend hadn't fired on us? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure we could have come up with some other way to trick him into making a mistake. Undoubtedly. If there is one thing I have learned from dealing with humans... When it comes to trickery and deceit, humans have no equal. Why, you pointed-eared Vulcan, what makes you think you can call us tricksters and get away with it? There's no use arguing about it, Bones. When Spock's right, he's right. Well, you don't have to be so happy about it. 